Welcome back to Still a Part of Us. Thank you so much for giving us a little bit of a insight into Patricia and what had happened to her. So Melissa, thank you so much for coming back on Still a Part of Us. I am going to actually ask you if you can tell me exactly what happened to her and how long ago that was when she was born. She was born 16 years ago. Yeah. And um, it was a cord. It was like a... It yeah. was a cord accident because it had, yes. tell me, tell us a little bit about how that happened. Um, her cord had fallen into my cervix and cut off her oxygen. Yeah. And it was, it was kind of, we, the doctor thought when she was trying to turn herself, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah it looked as though she was turning herself and the cord had fallen. Down into an exact spot that it kind of pinched off her. Yes. Pinched off her oxygen and cut it off. Yeah. And that is, um, it's so easy to think that you were like you could you did something wrong but it's in this situation it's like it just happened and it was unfortunate um that it happened yeah so it has been 16 years melissa can you do a little bit of comparison between when she first passed away you said that you held it together for so long you basically broke down when everybody had left the hospital room including your husband and you were hearing babies in the background in the L and D crying around you, but you held it together for your kids. But the, how did that feel? Did that did you really hold it together, or were there times when you were breaking down and 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 crying and mourning? Well, thinking back now, when I first held her, I cried for a few minutes. Yeah, but then I was just you know in the moment of holding her and spending a little bit of time with her that I tried to enjoy it and. It was good. Yeah. With, yeah, held it together pretty well after until yeah. that night. When you entered, well, I guess when you told Cassandra, your oldest daughter, who was four, that um, you had lost your baby, her baby sister, and she was just crying, right? Crying. And at the yeah, funeral, she, just crying. Um, yeah, she cried for a while. And um, she is actually now just turned 20. Mm -hmm. And when she graduated, three years ago um for her graduation pictures she held a picture of the baby in her graduation pictures really yeah for her graduation pictures she um there's two pictures one with her aunt that she was close with that past yeah. and with uh patricia oh that's so, so sweet. her graduation picture is one with her looking down at uh, patricia's picture oh that's so cool <laughs> So she definitely understood. She definitely has had a connection with her, it sounds like, for all these years. Yeah. That's that's really cool to feel that connection. I, I, I also think my kids, I like my two kids, they definitely feel a, a connection to their brother. And I think it's cool like I to have that they're part oh, of the family. They, even like the younger ones, like the ones that were born after, like if we go to the um, cemetery, even the, um my 14-year-old, she uh -huh. she cries when we go there, you know, even though she's never Yeah, she never met. She's her younger and, yeah. and yeah. she yeah, she was younger, but she um same thing. Like we go there, she cries and it's hard for her too. Yeah. That you you kind of feel an emptiness. There's a somebody missing, it feels like. Yeah. So you, the doctor actually suggested that um he told told your husband to make sure you were never alone for that, at least for the first two weeks. Yes. Um, how were you feeling for those first two weeks? Well, once I was home and with the kids, like I felt I actually was okay. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I was like, you need to go to work. And I was okay with being home with the other two. I think that they helped me, my mind stay busy and for me to keep it together. Okay. So they were, they were a little bit of routine that you needed to help with, right? Like you were trying to maintain that routine. Yeah. So with the kids being there, like it, it definitely kept me in that routine. Yeah. And kept my mind off of what had happened. Yeah. Were there times that you did feel like you you did break down or you were able to just be a little bit more real with that and not necessarily keeping it together, if that makes sense? Oh, yeah. I mean, I've, you know, within them a couple of weeks, I did went through a lot of uh, crying and yeah, definitely felt the grief. Yeah. And you know, I would try to as much as possible to keep it together, but definitely was times that I had um cried and I I would sleep with the bear for a while. Yeah. Yeah. 
those little stuffies they just like make even huge... now like uh, if it's her birthday i always sleep with it yeah like on that date like during her birthday i always sleep with the stuffy <laughs> yeah yeah how sweet is that so as time has gone on um a few things have happened it sounds like you guys are we talked about this just briefly before we started but you uh really celebrate her you really take the time to on her birthday make sure that you guys celebrate. So can you tell us a, little, a few of the ways that you have, um, what you guys have done just to make sure that you're able to put a spotlight on her, on her birthday? Um, well, every year we try to go to the cemetery and mm -hmm. we always leave a little uh, trinket there, or little something there for her birthday. And yeah. we um, usually every year we'd have a little cake and mm -hmm. go out to eat and like for holidays, like for Christmas, I have a ball with all four of my kids and I have one for her. So all five of them I have with their names, their birth dates and all their birth information. Oh, cool. And um, <laughs> yeah, I have that for each of them. That and is then cool. Always try to do something on her birthday. That is wonderful. Every year we have a little cake. <laughs> yeah. And it sounds like you openly talk about her with your kids um the fact that you know your 14 year old is very aware of who she is and, and yeah i mean but the boys they're both like they really don't you know they're <laughs> they're in their own little worlds but the girls they always mm. want to go and they have a connection leave flowers for you know for their grandmother and for patricia you know for yeah. both they always want to leave something there too that that's so, so sweet <laughs> <laughs> the girls got to stay together <laughs> yeah <laughs> Now, uh, with your your husband, um, how did you see you guys grieve differently? Did you guys notice any differences in how you process this this loss? Um, I think that you know, like when she was born, and he cried more. But I think after, like, he tries more not to think about it and not to bring it up. It's harder for him uh -huh. than, but to me, I'm able to talk about it more than he is. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, we're just, it's interesting how different people are and how they process it. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, I, I also want to point out you had, so you had two kids before. So you had Cassandra yes. and Jimmy and then you had Patricia and you have gone on to have a couple more children. Is that right? Yes. Madison and Brayden. Okay. So tell me, tell me how those pregnancies went. I just, it's always interesting um. to hear how people process the loss afterwards um when they are pregnant again well with them it was the same thing like i was just morning sickness beginning to end that just oh. that, that wasn't something that seemed to go away <laughs> that is terrible i'm sorry <laughs> yeah, it was i was in the hospital like i would be working and at the same time i'm trying to work i'm in the bathroom getting sick just throwing so it was up just, oh. yeah to the point where i couldn't work during my pregnancies anymore oh, and no. um with madison she was almost 10 pounds Oh, and she was, yeah. oh, wow. She was she was born with a full set of hair, too. Really? So just them two. The other three were no oh. hair. <laughs> but those two, full set of hair. And um, so, so that kind of reminded me of Patricia. But, yeah. Because she had the full set of hair. Yeah. Their pregnancies were, after Patricia, they were then, of course, high risk. So yeah. with them, I got, you know, um, stress tests and more ultrasounds. and yeah. But those were fine. I mean, aside from you being having morning sickness for nine months, were the those ones were f the pregnancies were fine. Yeah, everything was fine from the beginning to end with the other two. Okay, how were you doing uh, mentally and emotionally though during those pregnancies? Um, you know, I always had it in the back of my mind that you know something would go wrong or yeah. you know if they you know it could happen again and it, yeah. that it was just always something that stayed with me yeah and during them pregnancies it was always like I learned to like count the kicks and always thought something was wrong mm. even though nothing was mm -hmm. it is uh yeah there's this like your brain just automatically goes to the worst thing possible I feel like I yeah you're like oh was that enough kicks uh yeah, yeah something just... feels different it's the yes. worst always in the back of my mind that something was wrong yeah. Even though there there's is also besides a morning sickness, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. 
Oh, man. And one of the questions I'd love to ask you, Melissa, is why did you feel like you needed to tell her story now? Was there anything that compelled you to reach out to us? Um, because I, I, I'm always curious because, you know, if if you've just had a recent loss, it's one thing. Um, but if it's been a few years, I always like to know if you had anything that, that kind of got you to come come reach out to us. I think uh, more women go through losses than, you know, than we think. And yeah. I've had my neighbor across that used to live across from me. Her sister went through it. I had friends that went through it. And I think that everyone's story is different. And mm -hmm. but we all experience the loss. And, yeah, you know, it's just more women go through it than what we think. Hearing someone else's story, like I've seen someone on your podcast podcast that also had said that she had felt a kick like that. And then I know yeah. it's not just me, you know, if we have yeah. some things that are in common, but some that are different and yeah, it's just, you know, good to know that someone is know that you yeah. can, um, yeah, you can if that makes sense. You can, yeah. You can relate to them and, and also it feels not so like you're, you're not alone. Yeah. Yes. You're not alone. You're not the oddball. You're not, it's not some fluke. Um, you know, yeah. sometimes like you may think it's your fault, but then hearing other story, you know, it's not just you. It's not your fault. Yeah. You no, know, it's never. It's, yeah. It's not the mom's fault for. No. For sure. It is. It sometimes things happen and, and that's all that happened that with Patricia. Things happened. She was trying to get into a spot where she was supposed to, right? She was getting ready to, to, to she was turning herself and it yeah, just so happened. I happen. think hearing someone else's story, you know, it, it could help. Yeah. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. I agree. And, and I always say thank you to you guys for being so willing to share because that it does help us have um, a community and, and feel not so alone. Like you said, <laughs> not alone, yeah. not alone in all of this. Yeah. After, um, you know, seeing your podcast and seeing, hearing other stories, you know, it's, it, it helps, Yeah, you know, yeah. even though it's been for me 16 years, it helps. Yeah. You know, it comes I still. Yeah. You, know, you, you no matter what you're going to feel that grief you're going to when their birthday comes around or sometimes I'll look at my kids and you know I'll look at the two in between and I'm like okay she's 16 you know and like if she was here right now like what would she be doing and yeah. who, who who would she look like and so you know that grief you always feel it but hearing someone else's story helps yeah well and it's interesting because what you just said so um actually was kind of crazy because she would be getting her driver's license, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you and you mourn that new set of things that she isn't going to do. Experience, yeah. And and you know, I see the other kids experiencing it. And then I'm like, you know, she would be in between these two. And, yeah. you know, like. <laughs> what? Well, yeah. yeah what, so. what would she be doing? What sports and what, how would she be mm -hmm. doing in school? What friends did she have? Would she yeah, have? It's and, something that you always think about. <laughs> yeah. I, oh. yeah, those milestones can be real tricky. Um, oh, yeah. It can be really tricky. Melissa, thank you so much. This has been really super helpful for me. It's been, it's been nice to feel like that I can make it after a certain point of time. And I'm sorry for Oops. your loss because it still, like you said, I just, oh, it just kills me just to think about how your daughter could be getting your driver's license this week, I mean, yeah. you know, this year. And and I, th I think about my son and those those milestones that he's going to miss out on. That's a whole oh, new yeah. set of grief that I've never thought about before. So, yeah, I'm uh, sorry for your loss. It's yeah. difficult. Yeah, uh, it's it's all difficult and it's no all sad. How old they get, you know, it's you always feel it. And, yeah, yeah. So. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you so much again. I really appreciate your time today. Thank you. <laughs>